So let's talk about when men start missing you, when this one critical thing happens. And I think this will be a very valuable bit of information for everyone today. So what is missing, missing somebody? I think missing it can be, I'm not saying it's always this case, but missing can be a reflection of care when two people are apart, meaning that you are apart from this person, you care for them, and you wish to be in their presence. But sadly, I think missing today is more often a fear of abandonment, a fear that this person will not return, the fear that this person will replace you. And that's what missing feels like when we're apart from another human being. Now, what's interesting in the dating marketplace, there is a lot of advice out there that is, trig that is designed to trigger that unhealthy wound of fear of abandonment, fear of loss, fear of replacement. For example, the book, The Rules. It's a game playing book. Wait four hours to return a text. Make them wait could be some of the few suggestions in that book to trigger an anxious or fear-based way of being attached to someone. Now, there's, a, of course, in the pickup artist community, this is for men, there are psychological games being played to create that anxiety. There's something called negging, which is a neuro-linguistic programming type of technique to create fear within a person, to create anxiety, to create that missing. It's fascinating how psychology will oftentimes, well, people will use psychological tricks to to trigger the unhealthy aspects of an individual. And so it's no wonder it's such a mess in the dating marketplace right now, especially with advice, like I suggested the book, The Rules, and so much other advice out there that is designed to, to, um, to trigger the vulnerable parts of who we are as human beings. Now, I want to share with you, I have some theories as to why this happens at a base level. And these are merely my theories. Um, and that goes back to all the way to cave period, caveman period of time. Okay. By the way, it just sounds awkward to say cave people. Same, maybe it's easier to say cavemen, cave women period of time. <clears throat> but it used to be. Most of the time, they lived in small tribes, I'm guessing 20 or 30 people. And traditionally, the men went out on the hunt to catch the buffalo or protect against the dinosaur. And during that period of time, the men and women were apart from one another. And I think it's quite possible, then again, this is just my supposition, if you will, that women feared the men would not return because they'd be killed on the hunt. So they had this instinctual, I think over millions of years, this instinct of abandonment probably has been transposed in your DNA, in your coding, if you will. I recently did a video about our coding, how we all have coding as to who we are. And I think some of those base level fears are a reflection of this aspect of abandonment the fear of them not returning. So it's no wonder it's rather confusing today because we don't necessarily go out on the hunt when, some, when two people are in the dating and mating process. I don't think you're going to depart from a first date and feel as though that this person is going to die in the hunt, okay? I don't suspect that we on a psychological level do that. But I do believe that we have this instinctual territorial aspects of ourselves. The minute we bond with another human being, the minute we begin feeling a level of attraction or attachment. Now, did you know as I said attachment? See, many people don't understand love attachment. And I, I'm going to invite everyone to read two books, actually three books. 
Um, all the books I recommend are listed below in the books. Uh, Jonathan recommend books. I talk about this frequently. I talk about the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. I talk about the book Getting the Love You Want by Harbell Hendricks and Helen Hunt. And I definitely want to talk about Dan, uh, Stan Tack, Dr. Stan Tackin's book, Wired for Love. We had him on the channel. He talked about this. But if you're not familiar with love attachment style, this is where we attach oftentimes in an unhealthy way to another human being. And in this unhealthy way, the minute two people are apart, we feel this sense of longing. We feel this sense of missing almost at an anxious level, almost at that fear-based level that they're not, they're going to leave you or replace you. See, that's the trigger that happens when we are, I, I believe that missing has more to do with the fear of loss, the fear of replacement. And given that we are connected through our devices at almost at incessant levels, we are constantly connected that even when we're a moment apart, it can trigger fear, it can trigger loss, it can trigger the fear of replacement. And so even though this title says make men start missing you when this one critical thing happens, I want to replace the word missing with a more powerful word that I think has more value, but you wouldn't have clicked on it if I'd actually used this word. See, what saddens me today is I witness so many relationships that don't have some fundamentals from the very beginning. And it's no wonder they're going to implode later on down the road. And one of those fundamentals relates to the three types of people actively dating today. Okay. Now, by the way, you can notice right here, I say, this is not a fact. It's merely an opinion. But roughly, I say 20% of the popu single population out there in the dating marketplace are what I call users. These are the people that seek short-term game. They're the love bombers, the players, the gold diggers, the entitled people, selfish people, only caring about themselves. And I say that's roughly 20%. Again, that's just a guess. And while way over on the other end, I say 20% of people are grower builders. These are people that have a long-term commitment. They have their act together. They're emotionally mature. I'm probably being generous when I say 20%. And ladies that are watching, this is an equal percentage for men and women alike. This isn't singular to women, okay? And I roughly believe 60% of the population are what I call spenders. They seek companionship, they seek connection, they seek coupling, but they have dysfunction in their life and they're unable to fully commit to another human being. So... Why I'm sharing this with everyone is that we have a significant percentage of the population that is emotionally anorexic at best. I mean, we have a population of human beings, myself included. I'm, I am not here to profess that I am an emotionally healthy person. I am riddled with insecurities. I am riddled with flaws. Riddled is probably kind of a strong word, but I certainly have my fair share of stuff. I'm not a perfect human being. I don't profess to be. See, the interesting aspect of dating today is everybody thinks they're the exception and not the rule. Let me repeat that. Most human beings are in a delusion that they are the exception, meaning that they are emotionally healthy and everybody else is the problem. Men point the finger at women, women point the finger at men. It's actually a gender game. I see this frequently. Anytime I see comments on my YouTube channel, there is this a, a, ba a, a bashing of men by the women, since most of my audience is women, instead of taking ownership on their own part. When you can take 100% ownership of all of your experiences. And guess, I mean, I understand that there are going to be circumstances where they, things are outside of your control, but you certainly have the power to choose how you want to view things in life. Do you want to view, view it as a victim or do you want to be in victor consciousness? See, sadly, here in the United States, we are swimming in the sea of victim consciousness. We are suckling on the nipple of, I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me so I can feel good about myself. I need you to love me 
so I can feel good about myself. Instead of feeling good about myself, allowing me to give you love, and hopefully it's a reciprocal exchange of energy between two people. Because I said before, instead of missing, I think what's truly the critical thing that must happen, well, not this isn't the critical thing. Let me just reframe that. Instead of missing, I want to replace the word with appreciation. Men start appreciating you when this one critical thing happens. Everybody listen to that one more time. Men and women start missing you or appreciating you <laughs> when this one critical thing happens. You know, it's interesting. I recently wrote a meme. I, I want to share it with everyone. It's going to be published on my Instagram soon. So bear with me for a second. I just want to find this. Um, but it's, it's a quote. And the quote goes like this. Oh, shoot. I guess I deleted it. <laughs> well, gosh, I mean, I, I replaced it. So the quote goes something like this. The best relationships are when the other person feels like they got the better end of the deal. Let me repeat that. The other person feels as though they got the better end of the deal. When two people can be in such gratitude for one another, they can be in such gratitude for one another, genuinely grateful that this other person is in your life. That's the one critical thing that needs to happen to feel appreciated. When you're in such gratitude, and sadly, so few couples reach this state of genuine mutual gratitude for one another. It saddens me to say that because the reality is, is most people are experiencing some level of transactional type relationship. You're giving me a little bit of companionship. You're giving me a little bit of connection. You're giving me a little bit of sex. Each person is, this is the exchange without any real understanding of the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. This is one of the reasons why you might want to read the book uh, by John Gottman, The Seven Principles of Making Marriage Work. I want you to take out the word marriage and replace it with relationship. These are great foundational principles to understand the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. And when you can understand the real deep roots that are necessary to sustain a healthy relationship, if you go in with this consciousness instead of this ambivalent way most humans are dating today, there is this absolute naivety and ambivalence and ignorance and arrogance for so many people. And then you have to wonder, you only have yourself to blame if all you do is whine and complain. See, when you understand things, you can actually go in with a more conscious approach into the dating marketplace. And it's and it so fascinates me. I mean, women come to me all the time, Jonathan, I know what I want. I know what I want. I know what I want in a relationship. And then they go through this proprietary coaching program I created. And can you guess what they say every single time? Holy cow, I had no idea I was this naive. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link below. It, I mean, and it's amazing. The minute women make an investment and in understanding this, I get calls each week from clients. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. And they know the difference. They're actually attracting a higher caliber men because A, they understand their, their standard. Now, standard is really a reflection of the, they understand that character is the most critical component in a relationship. It's not about how tall they are, how much money they have, how they look. Those are certain factors in attraction, but real standards is a reflection of someone's character. Most importantly, their character with respects to commitment. Are they committed to wanting to be in commitment? That's a critically important piece. And yet, sadly, so few couples get to this place 
of gratitude towards one another because they don't understand the mechanics of a healthy, rap, happy relationship. So I'm going to give you a tiny little formula to post in the back of your mind for a moment. What's it take to be grateful towards another human being? And I think friendship is the highest form of gratitude within a relationship, a romantic relationship. When you're genuinely friends with one another, when you genuinely enjoy spending time with one another, when you can do, you can build the deep roots of trust through social activities, through hobbies, through mutual interests, to spending time with family and friends, to traveling together, to teamwork building skills, both in your personal and your professional life, and certainly intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy. All of those are it's like roots to a tree. The deeper you sustain those or, or, or strengthen those roots, the stronger the relationship is. I want you to imagine a, imagine a tree without roots. What's going to happen in a hurricane wind? It's going to blow right over. It's no wonder that 90% of casual relationships never make it to something more substantial. I want you to think about that for a moment. If we roughly have a 56% divorce rate, and that includes first, second, and third marriages, and actually I believe that number is even higher than 56%. As James Sexton says, marriage is a failing technology, it's a weak technology. But if, if the numbers are that high for marriage, casual relationships have a much higher failure rate. Situationships have a much higher failure rate. Friends with benefits has a much higher failure rate. I'm here to espouse if you want to put the odds forever in your favor. First, do the inner work. I talk about this in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Link below to get the book I recommend, my books, and all the books I recommend. First, do the inner work. Then understanding mechanics, you now put the odds in your favor so you don't have to be in that 90% failure rate. Maybe you get to like a 75% failure rate. Rather, did you ever see the movie um, uh, Dumb and Dumber? He's uh, uh, Jim Carrey says to Lauren Holly, like, what's my chances with you? And she goes, one in a million. And he says... So you're saying I have a chance, right? Well, we have a greater chance of success when we do the work. And I'm not trying to sound like a defeatist, but I'm not going to blow fucking smoke up your ass and make it sound like, oh, it just you have to follow my formula and you're just going to magically attract the person of your dreams. That's just, by the way, any dating coach that says that their system is the best and it works, they're full of shit because human behavior is so fucking complicated. It's and, and, and there's so many moving parts to a successful relationship, like all the game playing temporarily works. The book, The Rules, temporarily works. Yes, temporarily for like a nanosecond. But get remember, most humans aren't experiencing a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship. But I want to put the odds in your favor. And this is why I speak at the top of my lungs, why I scream often at the camera, because I want to encourage everyone to do the soul work of healing on the inside. And by the way, remember I talked about cave people? We have generational stuff we have to clean up as well. I was watching a Netflix episode the other day called Another Self another self. Someone write that in the chat box, another self on Netflix. It's actually a Turkish production. And many of you know, my heritage is Turkish. My parents are both from Istanbul, Turkey. And it's a fascinating story about healing generational trauma. And so it doesn't just start with our own work. It's also about going back in time and healing at every possible level to put you as I said earlier, the odds forever in your favor. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. Just as a reminder, gratitude is that one critical thing that must happen for men and women to start to appreciate you because that is more powerful 
than missing you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well so you can be notified of new videos. And if you'd like to connect with me, hey, schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. The link's in the description. You can uh, join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, where you can have direct access to me. You can follow me on Instagram. You can get the books I recommend. You can get my dating vows. You can join uh, my membership group here on um, YouTube as well. All of the links below.